fascinating. If you're new to compact tractors or if you've been around tractors for a while, there's probably something that you've heard about and that is ballast. But what we're gonna do today is change the ballast in the Kubota tractor because that came with water and water's not a good ballast solution in the rear tires because water can freeze. And although we're here in Florida, there is a better solution for weight in your back tires for ballast and that's something called rim guard. Now rim guard is a byproduct of the beet manufacturing process. It's a red liquid, it's desugared and they put it in your tires and it's about 25% heavier than water. There's multiple things you can put in your tires for ballast. Water is about eight pounds per gallon. This beet juice is about 11 pounds per gallon. And you can also put things like windshield wiper fluid, which actually is lighter than water. Um, calcium chloride was something that was used years ago. And we'll talk about that through the video. But the reason that's not used much anymore, if it's used at all, even though it has a lower freeze point than beet juice, is because it's very corrosive to your rims. But we've got Greg here from Ballast Services of Florida, and he's gonna remove the water from the tires of the Kubota that the dealer put in there, and then replace it with RimGuard. RimGuard is sponsoring this video and wanted us to show the process of how to install RimGuard in tractor tires for ballast. So I asked Greg if he wanted to be on camera and he said, no, not really, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. So here I am. <laughs> but here he is. Greg has the knowledge, he does this every day. So Greg, you said that rim guard, just the actual um, product to put in a tire is about $5 a gallon. Yep. And you said the trip, typical install is anywhere from three to 500. And a big thing is the capacity of the tire, exactly. right? Exactly, yes. So I'm, I filled as little as, as an eight gallon tire all the way up to um, 275 gallons in 275 one tire. 275 gallons. Yeah. On a Dusan 580, they're, they're large. <laughs> so if you think about that, 275 gallons, a rim guard's about 11 pounds per gallon. So 275 times 10, just for easy math, is 2,750 yeah. pounds you've added to that particular tractor. Now just, just one tire. He recently did a Kubota yep. for a gentleman and that gentleman had gone to Kubota and said, how much is it to put wheel weights on each side, right? Yep. And it was, it was insane. He, he told me, we had water from the factory from Crystal and it wasn't enough. He was having a lot of issues. And uh, he asked him about weights and they said, well, we have a, a weight kit, which are 100 pounds per tire plus the hardware, and that was $1,000 for just the kit. So 200 pounds and change for a thousand bucks. That's insane. So, so if you think about that, if you put wheel weights on here in the brackets, $1,000 to put 100 pounds here, we said we're gonna do about 35 gallons of rim guard in these tires. Yeah, and so. so that's about 350-ish pounds, maybe 360 pounds per tire. Per tire. So for anywhere from three to $500, depending on um, the size of the tire, but let's say 350 uh, to do both of these tires, we're gonna get 700 pounds of ballast. And if you went to the Kubota dealer, you're gonna pay $1,000 and get 200 pounds get 200 of ballast. Pounds. And a tractor this size needs between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds of ballast. It depends on the tractor and the, and the configuration, but mm -hmm. you need around 1,000 pounds minimum on the back on a tractor this size, just to be safe. Something we were talking about earlier, we're only doing the rear tires on here. And the reason that I don't want to do the front tires is I tend to puncture the front tires and I don't want to call Greg back five hours to do the front tires on this tractor. And uh, if you puncture the tire, not only are you going to lose rim guard through that puncture, but you've, I, I've rolled a tire before where it came completely off the rim. So that would be a mess and um, that would be costly. And I don't feel that I need it because when I need weight on the front, I've got the loader. So this is a 100% natural product. Yes. It's environmentally friendly, but it's also livestock friendly. Yeah. So you have personal experience I, with that, don't yeah, you? The, honestly, the, the biggest problem I have with my rim guard is when I do a fill at the house or at my shop, I have goats that free roam, range the yards and they will seek this stuff out like a bullet and they will find it and they will lick it till it is absolutely clean. And if they can get to my Haltech injector, they'll actually disassemble it with their tongue and uh -huh. lick it clean for me. And then you've got to find all the parts. <laughs> and you've had, they've had no issue with it. Not only does uh -oh. RimGuard say it's safe, but they've, you've been doing this for a while and your yep. goats have had no yep. adverse effect from and, it. And since I've started, um, obviously the economy has changed um, mm -hmm. and that affects animal feed drastically. Anytime the farming changes, like with corn and oats, mm -hmm. 
And so our main competitor for purchasing rim guard from the factory before we do what we do mm -hmm. to it is animal feed. It's about as environmentally friendly as you can get. I said, I got white gravel here. Will that stain my gravel? You said, no. You nope. said, it doesn't stain your shirt. It washes right out. I mean, you look at his hands, his hands aren't purple. Yeah, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really amazing stuff. I've, I've filled on concrete many times. And in fact, my first ever fill was on concrete and I had a spill. And his only complaint was that the grass grew so high around that pad. <laughs> We're learning so many additional benefits of RimGuard that I wasn't planning on getting into in this video, but that's all interesting stuff. So I don't want to delay you too much. He's got a long drive back, but uh, he's going to dewater the, the Kubota tires and he's got a special process for that. We're not going to give you the details because it's a trade secret, but he's going to remove the water without deflating the tire. And then he's going to inject the rim guard and we'll show you all that. So as we mentioned earlier, the Summit comes from the factory with rim guard in the rear tires. Summit specs say this tractor weighs almost 3,400 pounds. And some of that is the rim guard that's in the rear tires. Kubotas on the other hand, do not come from the factory with rim guard. Your Kubota dealer may install it for you, but it's gonna be an added on cost. I think it's essential that you have ballast in your tires because it's not only useful when you're lifting things with your front loader to keep um, your tires on the ground and, and give you more stability, but also if you're using ground engagement equipment, it gives you more power and more traction to the ground. His mobile setup for rim guard is rim guard and an IBC tote. He's got an air compressor. He's also got some propane tanks back there, but they don't have propane in them. That's just additional capacity for his air compressor. And then he has his pump here and he's over here now hooking up his apparatus that allows him to dewater the tire. He actually jacked up my Kubota here so that he could freely turn the tire because he's gonna want that valve stem at the top well, if he's dewatering, he probably wants it at the bottom. And when he's filling, he probably wants that valve stem at the top. While Greg's dewatering the Kubota, I wanted to like talk about another very common but older form of ballast, and that's calcium chloride. What's your experience with that? You asked me before you came here, did I have calcium? Because most people re refer to it as calcium. But the chloride part tells you that there's sodium in it. But you asked me, uh, did I have that or just water? And I said, you know, we're in Florida, so we're not worried about freezing because calcium right. chloride is good down to minus 58 degrees, yeah. I believe. Yep. What is your experience with calcium chloride? What have you seen out there in the field? It's extremely toxic to animals for one. I mean, like just a little bit and it'll kill them. It doesn't matter if it's a cow or a dog or a squirrel. It's really bad stuff. It's not federally regulated as waste. It should be, but it's not. Okay. So I collect it into a barrel and then I neutralize the pH down to a safe level. And then you can dispose of it. Um, it, it makes it safer, but it's still, I don't like messing with it. I've only done a couple and uh, it, I literally add two days to the job. I won't do them in the field. I do them at home, so I'm close to a shower. Face protection, I mean, it sounds a little crazy, but you spray it in your eyes and it's bad. And over time, the water will evaporate. Like when you air up the tire, mm -hmm. it gets a little moisture and as it dries. So the calcium chloride will actually potentially get stronger over time, Makes more, sense. more dense. So the last one I did was about half full. And let me tell you, that stuff would peel the paint off of anything. It was terrible. It was terrible. Um, it kills grass. It, it just, it's just horrible stuff. And, and other than being heavy, there's no, there's nothing good about it. Yeah, and it is something that's very common. When I was growing up on a farm in Virginia, my dad had it in the tires of his tractor. And I mean, that's what all tractor dealers did. Yep. You know, they put calcium, want calcium in the tires. And I know, um, and this is from the 70s, I know that it rusted out the rim oh, yeah. of one of dad's tractors. And even if you have a tube in there, uh, I guess either from checking air pressure or whatever, you'll get that calcium around um, the the fill valve of the tube. Yep. Especially older type tubes, mm -hmm. it can actually migrate through the tube and they're not necessarily, you know, fully sealed. You know, right, I've heard that, that they'll go through the rubber of the tube and still ride out your rim. So yep. if you were, if your dealer or someone out there is recommending calcium chloride or calcium as it's called, I, I would recommend, Greg would, re would yep. recommend staying away from that. Yep. If you can't afford beet juice or rim guard, you can always use water. Some people use antifreeze. Yep. The bad part about antifreeze is animals like antifreeze yep. and antifreeze will kill them. So, so I, if it leaks. I, I will do fills with antifreeze. Uh -huh. If somebody has a particular application, say they, they do a lot of mowing and, it, and they don't want that much weight, but they need a little weight. I will do that, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it has to be animal safe antifreeze before I'll do it because tractors generally are on farms, right? Yep. Um, and two, I won't do the full 
50-50. It's, I'll just put enough to keep the rust out. And then I won't warranty anything. <laughs> I mean, if you have a special situation where you don't want the heavy weight, we can do that, but I really don't like to. It's rim guard is just so much better. That all sounds good. I'm taking you away from your job here. <laughs> so let me get back on the camera right, and let man. you get back to work. All right. But after Greg was done dewatering the left rear tire of the Kubota, he started filling that up with rim guard. He started dewatering the right side. Now he's got that all emptied. And we didn't capture the rim guard going in on the left side. We'll capture it on this side because that's the side the sun is on. But before we do that, I wanted to thank rim guard for sponsoring this video. And they asked that I mention that if you go to rimguardsolutions.com and we'll put that information down below, you can look up in your area where there's a certified installer like Greg that can do this for your tractor. Now, Greg is the only one that is certified in Florida to install rim guard and he's in the Tampa area but they're always looking to expand. So maybe you wanna be an installer or you're a tractor dealer and you would like that service at your dealership, contact RimGuard and maybe you can become a dealer for them. He's ready to fill it with RimGuard. So Greg, what's the process here, man? All right, so we've got the water out, we're dewatered. I've got the pressure in the tire down to about five PSI. We don't like to go below that for safety reasons. And then I'll start injecting right now. All right, so we got the um, air compressor hooked up. We've got the line coming in from the rim guard. And this hose right here. And there we're going. Filling the tire with rim guard. How do you know when it's full? That's a good question. When it gets full, I'll show you. The gauge on there, since the rim guard is thicker than air, so when I burp the air out, if the pressure gauge drops to zero, then I know it's full. If it goes up and air comes out, then I know it's not full. So that's the air gauge or the gauge he's talking about? Yeah, it does vacuum and pressure. And so what I'll do is when I check it, I'll turn the pump off. This is the pump, the flow from the tank. And I switch the selector valve. Now we're at the tire. So you can see there's a couple of pounds of air pressure in it. And uh, so if I were just checking this, I would do this. And that's how I'd let the air out. So once we get it filled up, it'll, it'll have a bunch of air in there we'll have to let out. I'm glad Greg explained that because I don't think I would have got it right. So that's the actual beet juice on the tire, right? Yep, this is the actual stuff. It's uh, These almost always leak a little bit, so but you don't really lose much. And when that as that dries, it'll get kind of sticky, but you can just hit water to it and it just rinses right away. I'm going to agree that it's kind of got a appetizing, an appetizing <laughs> odor to it. I don't, I wouldn't have guessed it was beet juice, you know, just to go up and smell it but it's a, it's a little syrupy. Like you said, as it dries, it'll get sticky, but a uh, very interesting process. Uh, one of my fills the other day, a fellow lived actually in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands, and he said it smelled just like the rum distillery uh, in St. Croix. He said this is exactly what it smells like all day, every day around the distillery. It smells like rum. So I had that beet juice all over my hands and I just took some water and rinsed it off. There's no staining, no stickiness. It just washes completely clean or completely free with no residue on your hands. All right, Greg's gonna burp it. All right, so we've got our back pressure, I call it, up to 10 pounds. This is just the air that's being displaced. So all I do now, select this valve over where it's pulling from the tire, and this is going back to the tank. And you'll see the pressure stays up, this empties out, and the excess air will burp back to the tank. And I'll do this until it gets down to between three and five pounds, and then we'll start filling again. We never wanna go below that so the tire doesn't come off the rim and you lose 69 gallons like I did on my first fill. So in my mind, I can actually visualize that. So he left enough air in the tire so the tire didn't deflate and come off the rim. And as he puts that beet juice in from the bottom to the top, that beet juice starts to fill. And at some point it builds up air pressure. And that's why he had to burp it to get that air pressure out so he could continue filling it. And something else interesting that Greg told me is some of his regular customers, when they get a spike or something in their tire, they don't want to have to pay five dollars a gallon for new beet juice so they'll rotate that spike to the top leave it at the top and then call greg and he can actually recycle or suck the beet juice out before he fixes the tire and that way he can put the beet juice back in and not charge them five dollars a gallon to refill it so i just asked greg how high does the rim guard come in the tire and he said when he's done the rim guard will be to the top of this rim and that's about 75% filled, so the rest of it is air pressure. Ideally, a tire wouldn't leak, but with that rim guard at this point, the valve is below the rim guard, 
So if you were to hit that Schrader valve, you're, you're going to get rim guard coming out, not air, right? Yep. I mentioned to them that if, um, you know, we get a spike in the tire and the tire starts to leak, to put that at the top and you can actually recycle the rim guard by sucking it out before you repair the tire. I've done a lot of repairs that way. If any kind of a cut or a leak, just, just roll it up to the top and I can, I can take care of the rest of it. Yep, it saves, uh, saves the customer that, that cost of new rim guard. I wanted to share some numbers. So the tires had water in them from the Kubota dealer. So figure 35 gallons of water at eight pounds per gallon. They had 290 pounds of ballast in them. Times two for two tires is 581 pounds of ballast in the tractor when Greg arrived on the property. Now by removing that water and installing rim guard at 10.7 pounds per gallon, which is 25% heavier than water, we have 375 pounds per tire. We have a total of 750 pounds, which is a net gain of 170 pounds total between both tires of weight or ballast added to the back of the tractor just by switching from water to rim guard. Greg's all done. He's got both rear tires filled with rim guard and he's starting to clean up now. And it took two hours from the time we started till the time we finished. The only thing left to do is put the sticker on the valve stem. And what that will do is not only remind me that I have rim guard in the tire, but also remind uh, a tire installer or a tire technician that there is ballast in the tire. Greg predicted up to three hours to change out the water for rim guard in the rear tires of the Kubota, but it actually only took him two and we couldn't be more pleased. He was so professional, he was so friendly and rim guard has a great partner with Greg. But now both tractors on Piney Grove, the Summit TX25H and the Kubota L3901 have rim guard as their ballast solution in their rear tires. And we'd like to thank rim guard for sponsoring today's video. Now that you've seen the process and how easy it is, maybe it is the tire ballast solution for your tractor. And it doesn't have to just be tractors, it could be a zero turn that you wanna put rim guard in to increase the weight so that you get better traction. But we appreciate Greg, we appreciate rim guard, and we appreciate you guys for watching. Here's a couple links to a couple of our other videos, but until next time, y'all take care out there, and remember life's short, tractor hard.